Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. The year 2020, the year of the Lord. 2020 is over with all its foolishness, with everything. It's gone and a new year has begun. I don't know for some people like, wait, but it's just another day. You wake up tomorrow and it's the same thing. No, another year has passed and we need to celebrate. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for being with us. We thank you that we're alive to say thank you. And Lord, I pray that this year will be a different year for us as we walk with you. We love you. We thank you for your blessings. Um, speak through me, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. For those of you who are seeing me for the first time, my name is Tamara V. Lawrence. And I am the host. I am the creator of Marriage Ministry Motherhood. That's been my journey. I've been married for ten and a half years. I've been in ministry for eight years. And I've been a mother for the last four years to a 15-year-old child from the interior of Guyana. And the other day I was like, Lord, I need something to share with your people. I'm not, I'm not a pastor. I am a minister who is a missionary. We're all ministers. I think, um, I'm not an ordained pastor. I'm, I'm not, I say minister because we're all involved because I'm involved in ministry. That that's, that's the only reason I'm using that term, but I'm not a preacher. Lord, please tell me what to speak to your people because I felt in my heart that I needed to share something. And just like all the other times in my life, when I'm not positive, I wait. And the Lord gave this to me a few days ago, and I knew this was what I needed to share with you um, this evening. And what I wanted to share with you is that though 2020 was terrible, and there were so many deaths, and Corona came and took over, this plague came and really, really messed up so much that he wanted to let us know that he's the God of second chances. Yes, and he's willing to start us all over again. But the starting over that he really wants to do is a starting over on our relationship with him. So if you can look back and you can say, well, though 2020 was bad, my... My sleeping away did not start in 2020. It started a little time before that. So I can't even blame 2020 and all its craziness for my relationship with God not being the way that it's supposed to be or how I want it to be. But I'm here to tell you that the God of second chances wants you to know that 2021 could be it. Start again. He's willing and he's waiting. And this is what I share with you in case you're thinking, mm, you know, I've gone too far. I've done too much. I cannot come back. Find your Bible and find Matthew, Saint Matthew, the first book of the New Testament and go to chapter one. Read through it. And when you do that, then what I'm going to say to you right now will make so much sense. Yes. As I look at the genealogy of Jesus, yes, as recorded in Matthew. There are names that really, really, really struck me and they made my eyes pop open and it really brought home to me how much my God is a God of second chances. Okay, so God wanted to send his son to earth so he could die for us so we can have a chance at heaven. We all know, you know, sin happened, Adam and Eve messed up, and we were all born in a world that's sinful. Well, God wanted to give, it, give us a second chance. And to be able to do that, we needed somebody who'd never sinned. So he was going to send his son, the only one who's never sinned, to come, the only one worthy anyway, to come and die for us. So he had to find a home for this child to be raised in. He needed to find a womb for this child to grow in from uh, a fetus to, you know, um, to a baby. And he chose this woman called Mary and a father, Joseph. But when we look down the line 
okay um mary was a, a nice virgin girl who very good yeah getting married as a virgin praise the lord um joseph was a good guy but then let's look back and see how these guys came about when i look back i saw somebody called judah and i was like oh so of all the 12 sons of jacob he chose judah judah was from leah not rachel leah was the wife who was deceitful the wife who was not supposed to be the wife the wife who tricked this guy into marrying her yes the wife who then because of that was not loved at all but god chose a child from that family yes and then i saw the name perez who was perez's mother perez's mother was tamar yes and who's tamar tamar is judah's daughter-in-law who tricked him tricked twice uh, who tricked him into um getting her pregnant because he promised her that oh i'll get a son and you'll marry him and he did not keep his promise and she was there sitting now waiting and she's like well i'm not gonna wait any longer i'm gonna make something happen and she tricked him yes and out of that, so Tamar the trickster is in the bloodline of Jesus? Yes. Yes. And then I went down and I saw Boaz. Boaz the perfect gentleman. Who was Boaz's mother? Boaz's mother was Rahab the harlot, a non-Israelite who secured her place out of an evil city by protecting the Israelites who went in to check out Jericho. She hit them and she's like, listen, this is my ticket out of here. When I look after you, I want you to look after me when you come back. And they did. Rahab, the non-Israelite, the harlot, is a part of Jesus's bloodline. Hmm. Talk about a God of second chances. And then there's Obed. Obed's mother was Ruth. Ruth the Moabite. Yes, Ruth was not an Israelite. But Ruth is a part of Jesus' um, lineage. And then there's Solomon. Of all the sons of David, son of Jesse, son of Obed. Yes, of all the sons that David had, Solomon. Solomon's mother is Bathsheba, Bathsheba the adulteress. Bathsheba, the adulteress, whose boyfriend killed her husband. Solomon, the product of this relationship. Yeah, not the first product. The first one died. Solomon's the second son. But Solomon, of all people, was the one who Jesus chose, or God chose, to be a part of the bloodline. And then I saw Manasseh. Manasseh's son of the guy, Hezekiah, the king, who was about to die, he asked for some time. God gave him 15 more years. And instead of using those, um, this miracle, because the Lord turned the sundial back, and instead of using this miracle to praise God, everybody who come to hear about it, he shared about himself. He talked everything about how beautiful his place was, and he showed off. And nothing about God was presented. And in those 15 years, he brought so much evil was done. And he brought forth a son who then turned out to be one of the most evil king in all of Israel. Came out of those 15 years of longer life that he was given. Did God have no one else? Did God have nobody else to use? But two women who were harlots, a foreigner, an evil king, an adulteress, and a murderer. Are these the only women that God could have thought of that would have been fine to be a part of the bloodline of his son? God had other options. Of course he did. Yes, there, was, there were Benjamin and Joseph. They were from Rachel, the beloved. Because it's not like Rachel had no children. And if there was ever a man who was after God's own heart, I know it's attributed to David. But if, if there's ever a man who was like Christ, it was Joseph. 
So of all the sons, he could have chosen Joseph, but no, God had another plan for Joseph. God needed Judah. Yes, and then you think of Judah. Was Perez the only child that Judah had? Judah had? No, Judah had other sons, but God needed Perez. The others had their own purpose. And there were so many daughters in Israel. Why Rahab the harlot, who's from Jericho? Yes, and David had other sons than Solomon. Yes, but God had other plans for them. Because my God is a God of second chances, basically. God could use anybody to bring his son here, but he chose these people. Yes, the same way God has chosen you. Don't think that, oh, let somebody else do it, let somebody else do it. Each person has their own purpose. God gives second chances. You just need to make yourself available. And don't sit down and think, Lord, if you only know what I've done, if you only know where I've been, if you only know things I have I have done, Lord, please. I, let me tell you a little bit. I remember being at university and I went out one Saturday night. I went to church Sabbath and I went out this Saturday night and I did not come in until five the next morning because from the play, we then went to a club to see the people from the play. Me, the missionary that's been in what, about 12 countries telling people about God. I came back. I came back I, when I got home at five o'clock that morning and I knelt down to pray. I heard this voice clearly saying, what are you doing? Who are you speaking to? Are you serious? Do you think God's going to hear you? And can I tell you, honestly, got up off my knees. I could not pray. I felt so guilty. But that's what the accuser does. He accused while God is saying, confess your sins and I'll, I'm faithful. I'm just, I'll forgive you and I'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. My God is the God of second chances. If I had not accepted that, I would not have been able to go around telling people that Jesus loves you. You need to change and let the Lord into your heart and your lives. Yes, so God is looking to do great things through you. God is looking to move a nation through you, God is simply asking you that you repent and turn back to him. Boaz was one of the most decent men. Yes, I've ever read about in the Bible. Such, such a decent young man. But he was raised by a former prostitute. So just like how sometimes the foolishness, sometimes the mess is not you personal, personally, but it's your mom or your grandma or your auntie or your cousin or whatever it is. But that's not you. He was raised by a prostitute, Rahab, a former prostitute anyway. But he, he did not let that hold him back at all. Yes. And I know that many of us can look down our family tree and not so far away we can see incest and rape and illegitimacy and, and all sorts. Yes. But God is saying, I do not hold that against you. And it's not for you to hold it against yourself. I know that the Messiah has already been born. So none of us can expect to be the Virgin Mary again. Because that's already happened. Um, but Jesus is looking for an army of youth, rightly trained. And yes, I might not be able to consider myself um, a youth. Because I have way out of my 20s, long time. But I want to be used by Christ. God wants to use you, but he's asking that you repent and claim your second chance in him. 2020 may not have been the best. And you're a bit scared of where the world is going. But just remember that Jesus has promised that all the, the diseases of the Egyptians will not be upon you. That's what he told his Israelite children. You do not worry because what they get, you won't get it. However, just remember that not everyone who died in the wilderness, they might not have had diseases and stuff, but they did die. But not thought all those who died in the wilderness and missed out on Canaan, missed out on heaven. So even though that promise was made and you might think, oh, but how did my grandma die? And how did this, if the Lord said, because the Lord will put some of us to sleep. So don't even hold on to that and use that to scare you. Yes, but my friends, let us be faithful for the year 2021. Let us start over. Let us 
claim our second chance and let us be willing to start over with Christ for the year 2021. And I'm going to say that if there's anyone who need any help in this, I have a webinar that I'll be doing on the 10th day of January. Why 10th of January? Because I think I think having 10 days to really realize that the new year has started is needed. Because, you know, somebody, they turn 15 and the next day, oh, how's it been 15? Oh, oh you turn 18, that long awaited age. How old are you? I'm 18. Oh, how does it feel just like another day? Because it doesn't really sink in immediately. Yes. So just like Daniel had 10 days to um, change as he purposed in his heart and he was 10 times wiser and stronger and all those things. Take these 10 days to let go the baggage of 2020, to purpose in your heart for 2021 and to start all over. And I'm going to send out the details for this webinar as I'm going to talk you through some steps of things I wish I had done um, right and how we can really hold on to 2021 as we rebuild our relationship with Christ. Happy New Year, everyone. If this has really touched you, if this has resonated in any way, comment down and just say amen. Just say thank you. Just say praise the Lord. I want to be a part of this. Yes. And comment down below and let us start this journey of the year 2021 together. Send it to somebody you know needed. Share it on your page. I'm okay with that as we continue. I'm Tamara and I'll be here with you as we grab on to our second chance and start all over again. Thank you for listening and I love you all.